All right, gang. Thank you. These are hard to pull off when you organize them weeks ahead, so I appreciate you guys coming out early. The main event for UFC 200 is Mark uh, Hunt versus Brock Lesnar. And I'm going to get a couple more people out here to talk. So just hang for a minute as we get organized. But the main event for UFC 200 is Brock Lesnar versus Mark Hunt. What's that? Yeah, have a great night. Go back to bed. <laughs> What's that? Drug testing or injury? No. Yes. Uh, go ahead. Are you ready? Good evening. The UFC organization was notified tonight that the U.S. Anti-Doping Agency has informed John Jones of a potential anti-doping policy violation stemming from an out-of-competition sample collection on June 16, 2016. USADA, the independent administrator of the UFC anti-doping policy, will handle results management and appropriate adjudication of this case. It is important to note that under the UFC anti-doping policy, there is a full, fair, legal review process that is afforded to all athletes before any sanctions are imposed. However, because Jones was scheduled to compete against Daniel Cormier this coming Saturday, July 9th in Las Vegas, there is insufficient time for a full review before the scheduled bout and therefore, the fight has been removed from the fight card. As a result, the three-round heavyweight bout between Brock Lesnar and Mark Hunt will become UFC 200 main event. Consistent with all previous potential anti-doping violations, additional information or UFC statements will be provided at the appropriate time as the process moves forward. Thank you, guys. Boom. No. So uh, obviously, second time in three fights that John has done this. Um, what is your reaction to it, first of all? And um, do you know anything more than I know? You can't say, but do you know any more than what Jeff? I don't. Done? That, that's all I know. That's all I know. And um, you know, obviously, he's you know. He's got the, 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 the chance to prove himself innocent before being called guilty. But uh, if it's true, obviously super, super disappointing. When did you first become aware of this? Just whenever you guys got called is when I, when I found out. Have you spoken to John? I have not. <clears throat> or Malky, any representative? N have neither. Okay. So we have no so idea. The, so the way that this process works is the Nevada State Athletic Commission is – is is uh, is told first, then we are told, then um, they notify the fighters. My last question for you, and uh, this would probably be better for Jeff, but do, um, do we know if he's uh, requested it, uh, the B sample to be tested at this point? No, nothing yet. Okay. No, nothing. We got it to you guys as quick as we could. Dana, with a bout of this magnitude, do we know why it took several weeks to get in the result? Yeah, uh, I, that I don't know either. You know, when they, when they do these things, it, it, when they test, if something pops up, they, then they, they go crazy and test it numerous times and run it through, you know, whatever they do. I, I'm, you know, but they, 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 they go crazy testing it, and they never give – uh, a result until they're absolutely positive. I know the statements that are given out by the USC are generally pretty bland by nature, but I mean, do we know if this is a, a performance enhancing substance? Or, you know, I don't know. That I don't know. Drug abuse shouldn't be. Right. Right. 
And uh, I mean, what are the plans with Daniel Cormier moving forward? Just do, do we look at booking something else for him, or is this sitting, waiting tight on John Jones? Yeah, I mean, it's obviously this is devastating to Daniel Cormier. You know, not only mentally and and physically, he just went through a camp, and and financially, this is uh, this pay per view is trending to be massive. So, and and he shares in that in that revenue. So, it's it's devastating to him in every way it could possibly be. Did he happen to provide you guys any statement? He's here. He's, I'll bring him out next to talk to you guys. And obviously much minor details, but the rest of housekeeping, does everything just move up a, a fight? Is that how the rest of the bout card works? Probably. Uh, you know, Joe Silva is in the air right now, so he doesn't know, so I will talk to him when he lands. And, you know, maybe somebody wants to pop up and fight Cormier last minute. Um, stranger things have happened, so we'll see what happens. Uh, I would like for that to happen for Cormier, obviously. Um, you know, listen, when you have the biggest, baddest fight card ever assembled, you know, uh, it doesn't sting as bad when you lose a fight, but it stings real bad for Daniel Cormier. You know, this is devastating to him, his family, and uh, I'd like to make a fight if I can. And just lastly, Dana, how, how about your thoughts here? I mean, this is seemingly worst case scenario when, when this whole program was launched. Uh, I know you have said that, you know, you're proud of the program, but when something like this happens, does it give you pause to think, no, have we gone too this far? Is, this is the way it, it should be. You know, we, we have the best program in all of sports, and, and this is the way it should be. Um, obviously, you know, like Kevin, I was at dinner too when I got the call, and uh, I, I literally like, Jesus Christ, I, I must have jinxed myself. Because I kept going, everything is going so smooth. Everything is going so smooth. And nobody had been hurt. You know, everybody was healthy. So, uh, yeah, this was, uh, this was a pretty brutal Phone call. Yeah, uh, apparently he was tested in June. In June, at some point in June, he was tested. So, yeah, when, like I said earlier, when they, when they, when something tests positive, when it comes up, they just run it through a bunch of different tests to make sure they never give a result unless they've really tested it. And in your experience so far with that, how long has it taken until it finally comes back? I mean, when might we get an answer? Well, now, you know, I think John, again, don't quote me on this. I'm not the guy for this, but uh, he, he has the ability to test the B sample. And um, he can have a representative there. He can be there himself however he wants to handle that. And you said, I think you told Kevin, you don't know if the B sample has been tested yet? It has not. Has not been tested. Right, because John was just notified. So it wouldn't be tested without his knowledge and his, uh, you know, his ability to be there or have a representative be there when they test it. Uh, you haven't talked to John yet. What would you say to him? If you could I haven't. I haven't talked to him. What uh, would you say to him if you could talk to him? Right I don't know. We'll see what he says to me. How, uh, how hard is it uh, to uh, have trust uh, in him, particularly just because it's such a big stage and such a big fight going forward? It's funny, man. I, I did the Jim Rome show uh, today, and Jim Rome asked me about, um, you know, John Jones and where he's at, considering all the things that happened to him. And I said, I got to tell you something. I, you know, this is weird to say. But this might be the best thing that ever happened to John Jones because he seems like a completely different person. And, uh, you know, the way he carries himself, the things that he's done. Um, and then, boom, this happens, you know. And just, uh, just a point, uh, where, where were you eating dinner? What's that? Where were you eating dinner? Where strip were steak. I was a strip steak at Mandalay Bay, yeah. Dana is uh, over here. Uh, is Lesnar and Hunt, is that five rounds? Three. No, it'll be three. It'll be three. Be three, yeah. And in the event you can't find an opponent for Daniel Cormier, how would his, like, will he be compensated? Will he be paid something? Or Well, normally what we do, you know, if a, for the guys that don't make a lot of money and they go through a camp and they show up, you know, we compensate them. Cormier makes a lot of money. So, I don't know. And just from your perspective, what? how does this change the next few days? I mean, people... The card is largely intact, but the biggest, arguably the biggest fight is off promotional-wise. Does that change anything over the next few days? No, no, it's it's Lesnar versus Hunt. You know, like like I said, 
you know, if, if, if a fight of this magnitude is going to fall off, at least it's during the biggest, baddest card we've ever assembled. So, I mean, when you look at this card, I mean, even the, the Fox prelims are ridiculous, you know. The Fight Pass prelims are ridiculous. It's, a, it's an amazing card. So, uh, I guess if it's going to happen, it's better that it happens here. Yeah, and last thing, if, again, if there's no opponent for Cormier, would, would a fight from the FS1 prelims move up onto the pay-per-view card? Yeah. Everything gets bumped up. Yeah. Yes, we will. Okay, thanks. Has what? I haven't called anybody. Other than Lorenzo. <laughs> Dana, uh, Lorenzo famously said at the press conference when you guys announced the USA deal, it's going to get worse before it gets better. Is this more or less the stuff you're talking about? Yeah, you know, but if you really look at what's happened with, with the USADA program, it hasn't been that bad. I mean, these type of things are going to happen. And, and uh, But, yeah, it, it could have been a lot worse. Yeah, and this is the fourth time Jones and Cormier has come together as a fight. Uh, are you willing to go back to the well a fifth time on this fight? It's pretty crazy. I don't know. I mean, it, we'll see how this thing goes down. Jones might get two years for this, you know? We'll see. There's, is there any kind of protocol for you to follow? I mean, if this is a positive test that stands, you know, given his history, he stripped him before, what would the, the penalty be? Yeah, it's going to be USADA will decide that. USADA will decide what the penalty is going to be and what's going to happen to him. Just curious, Dana, what, uh, what would a fighter have to do to step in last second against Cormier? Would it have to be at the top of the rankings or would you be open to sort of a fighter lower in the rankings who's really keen to jump in last second? Would you give that fighter an opportunity? What a, if if they're watching question. right now, what do they have to do um, to get that spot? That's a good question. Uh, I don't know. I don't know. We'll have to see what... Who, who, who wants the fight? Who steps forward? And uh, realistically, uh, how good of a fight we think it would be. You know what I mean? It's the best card ever. Rather than having Cormier fight somebody that absolutely positively should not be fighting him, I'd rather have him not fight. Cool? Bring Cormier out? Yeah? What's that? This sucks, <laughs> you know? I mean, I don't know what to say. This sucks. It's unfortunate. What's up, guys? D DC, can you uh, explain your emotion when you heard the news? Uh, very disappointed. Um, I've worked really hard to prepare for this, and, uh, you know, you take care of what you can take care of, and... Uh, that's what I did, you know, but more than more than anything, just really disappointed. We obviously don't know, you know, he, he has the right to test the B sample, so we don't know what the outcome is going to be. Were you believing the, um, the success story that he was showing, you know, uh, a lot of stories were talking about his resurrection and how he had worked with the crisis management PR person to kind of turn his life around. Were you seeing that up close, you know, compared to what you saw him uh, the last time you guys uh, went through this? You know, honestly, I, I tried to make it a point that that stuff was irrelevant to me because I was worried about the fight on Saturday night, you know. I spent a lot of time in the build-up to the first fight dealing with emotional stuff and out of the octagon stuff and I just uh after the press conference in March you know I just realized that I cannot fight this battle for everyone I have to fight it for myself so my focus shifted it was on me and my family my team and just representing the company to the best of my ability can you compare this to the Olympics is this in any way similar to what happened to you in Beijing you know Disappointment's similar, but in Beijing, it was my fault. You know, I, I'm the one that didn't manage my weight in the best way. Uh, but I did this time. You know, I've done everything right. and I put myself in a position where I felt like I could win this fight. So uh, to hear something like this, is, is, it's, it's very sad um, from a competitive standpoint, from a financial standpoint. There are a number of ways in which this is disappointing, and uh, I really don't know exactly how to explain 
how I'm feeling right now. Yeah, obviously, this very... may be a difficult question. My last one for you. You may not be able to answer it given what you just said, but if John is ever back, would you ever go through this again? Would you fight him again, given what you've been through with him? And you know, this is the fourth time you tried to fight with him. Uh, you know, it's, it's very disappointing. You know, um, I've always fought whoever the UFC's offered me to fight. So. I guess if if John was back and and the fight was the fight, then of course I would take it. You know, I'm, I'm just here to fight. You know, I'm here to fight, and I'm here to fight and try and be an example for kids to look up to and know that, you know, regardless of your circumstances, where you start, it's how you finish. And if you do the right thing, you know, and and be nice to people, care about people, people will care about you, and. I'm just here to, like, be a light for people to follow. You know, I've made a lot of mistakes in my life, just as everybody else has. But I'm just right now trying to do things in the best way that I, I can, you know, as a 37-year-old man. And Daniel, uh, Dana said he doesn't really want to make a fight just to make a fight for you on Saturday. But if you had it your way, do you still want to compete? Do you still want to fight on this card? Or how do you feel about it right I've now? trained hard and long, you know, and if... Anybody would fight, you know, I would fight. I mean, why not, you know, but I understand the difficult task it would be to get someone to fight me on two days. Uh, obviously, you know, I'm willing to fight up, put some weight, you know, 225, 220, I'll fight. It doesn't matter. I just I just can't really fight like a really big guy right now because I've been kind of shrinking my body in order to make 205. But, you know, if if it doesn't make sense, to, for the organization or for me, then it doesn't make sense. You know, I, I uh, we have always been in tune, me and the UFC, and we've made these decisions together, and uh, I'm assuming that's what we'll do this time, but if, if the bosses say it doesn't make sense, it doesn't make sense, I won't do it. And when would you need to really know that decision? Are you going to continue going with your weight cut? I mean, obviously the scales are open Friday 8 to 10, so... When does this really need to be figured out for you? You know, <laughs> I really can't answer that, you know, because I, I really don't know what's next. You got, you, if you could stop for a second and try to understand, like, what I just heard, you know, less than 45 minutes ago, to look to the future is very difficult. So I don't know. I really don't know. You know, I'm, I was 217 pounds this morning. You know, so I need to see what comes next. It's a, you know, it's difficult to ask somebody to step into this situation. I understand that. DC, uh, we talked two weeks ago, a week ago, whatever it was, and you said uh, when you were talking about the John Jones you saw at 197, that's the real John Jones. And you mentioned to me specifically at that time with USADA and the new IV rule, this is the new John Jones. Did you have a clue? I mean, at that point, was there something in your head you were you were curious about, or because you did mention that specifically? <sighs> you know, I'm not a guy that really likes to step on someone's. You know, I, I'm not a guy that likes to like pile on to somebody. You know, doesn't really matter who it is. Uh, USADA changes a lot of things. You know, they are a great organization that is going to clean up our sport. And, you know, I, I see people say things like, um, does this, the USADA want this? Does the, I mean, the UFC, they did this. They didn't have to do this. They decided to clean up the sport. And so you're going to have casualties. Um, I guess in regards to that, and again, John deserves due process. But if this is true, you know, if a guy that's if a guy that's going to do something that affects you negatively a month before your fight, there's a pretty good chance that that person will do things to actually enhance them too. So, I mean, take that for whatever it is, you know. But I he never failed before, so there's no reason for me to say that he was gonna. I don't even know how to say this because I don't even know if he, I don't really know what happened, honestly. So 
I'm just here answering questions because I'm not, I'm, I'm, I'm open, you know, I'm an open book. I know it's also fresh in your mind, DC, and this is probably a really hard question to ask you, but I mean, you know, we know the standard suspension is two years. I mean, that's, that's a long time. I mean, do you have to allow yourself a little bit of time to, to kind of deal with this, or do you have to kind of put John Jones out of your mind for now? Because, I mean, we don't know how long this is going to take. He could be gone for, you know, two years. That's a long time. You know, again, it's very difficult to answer, uh, but I've got to move forward. This chapter in my life has been dragging me and dragging me, and it's made me ugly. And it's not me normally. You guys have seen me over the course of my career, and some of my behavior in regards to that young man is, is very different. And uh, I guess we'll see what happens in his appeal process. But as of right now, I've got to move forward. You know, I, I can't live in this space right now. I've got to start to move forward and start to uh, clear my mind of anything in regards to him. Last question, and this might be, a, a, you know, again, kind of a follow-up to that, and maybe even Dana can weigh in, but, you know, if, if UFC 200 doesn't come together, and I know, you know, like Dana said, we don't want to just throw you in there with somebody, you know, how quickly do you want to fight? I mean, is that like, you know, are you going to, I mean, is there a chance you would change that Glover-Johnson fight, perhaps? Or, I mean, is it, I mean, how quickly would you want to get DC a fight? Or, you know, how quickly would you want to fight DC? I mean, you just went through a training camp, so... I did. You know, I went through a training camp. I worked extremely hard. I prepared for UFC 200. You know, and this was the big one. This one means everything to me. But once again, you know, when the UFC calls me and they tell me it's time to go, I'll be ready to go. But I'm going to need a little bit of time. This one stings. You know, this is not, this is not easy to deal with. I've, I've, my life has revolved around this for a long time. So this one stings. This one stings a little bit. Did this surprise you, or have you become accustomed to John Jones' activities and getting in trouble? Very surprising, because for, for all that I knew, he looked like he was doing good, you know, for everything that he said. You know, he said all the right things. He had put a team in place to, to manage him on all different, in all the areas of his life, not just inside of the octagon with his coaches, but... He had a life uh, crisis management coach. You know, his managers and friends have been closer to him. So it's very surprising. I, you know, man, I, sometimes I was very hard on him. But I, at the end of it, you know, you know if, he, if he was doing better, you know, who am I to be the moral police? You know, I've made a lot of mistakes. I've done some things in my life that are terrible. You know, I've, I've been through a divorce you know, because of things that I had done outside of my marriage. I'm not perfect. I've done a lot of negative things in my life, but I try to just improve on them as I move forward. So if everybody that's given me chances, you know, obviously he deserves a chance if, was, if he's going to do the right thing. So I'm not the moral police. I don't really, I really don't care all that much to just judge him all the time. So very surprising, yes. Daniel, where were you when you uh, got this news? Uh, the last hour and a half has been very tough because I got a text from Dana and he said, um, hey, uh, what are you doing? And I was like, nothing. I'm just laying down resting. Got to train at 845, try to lose some weight. And he, uh, I asked him if it was about my shoes or something. And he was like, no, it's not about your shoes. Can you meet me at 8 o'clock? It's this very bad feeling in the pit of my stomach, you know, because as you guys know, I've dealt with a lot of negative in my life in terms of, of, of bad things happening. So I kind of got that, that feeling like this guy always gives me good news. You know, this guy calls you with a seven figure check like, dude, you're rich now. You know, he calls you with good news and the, the mood didn't feel very good. So it was scary. And, uh, so I came here, I was actually early. It's probably the first time I've been early for anything, but I needed to know. But he's usually the good news guy, and today he had to deliver some pretty bad news and was very good through it. You know, I appreciate the way that Dana handled it and the, the fact that you were actually there to, to, to console me and, and really kind of walk me through everything. Because in those moments, you know, a lot of times you really do need someone. And, uh, you know, even if it's just a hug, 
you know, put your hand on the guy's back. Sometimes you need support, and that's what I've always got from the UFC. Cool. We're going to wrap it up, guys, okay? Thank you, guys. Thanks for coming late, and thanks. We appreciate it. Kind of a downer, you know, big, big, uh, big awesome weekend and great fights, and so it kind of sucks, but what are you going to do? See you tomorrow. Do you have any chance knocking? Is this violation on If there's what? Violated? Can't be good. Can't be good. Cannot be good. Oh, for the fight? For him to fight? Joe's going to land here probably soon. I'll talk to Joe. And, uh, Talk to Daniel and see what we can do. I haven't talked to them yet. No. No, I don't know. Brock hasn't called me or his guys, uh, so I bet they don't know. I only talked to Mark through Twitter. <laughs> so. Off the top of my head, no. Off the top of my head, no, but off the top of Joe Silva's head, I'll bet he'll have a couple, you know. I've been dealing with this, and um, obviously, like he said, telling him he was a mess, you know. It was cool of him to come out and talk to you guys. I didn't know if he was going to because he was a mess, so um, it's tough, you know. Patrick but come, come Did what? Yeah. Um, I don't know. I mean, we really got to look and see who's available, who's willing. You know, what happens is when this news comes out, guys start calling Joe Silva going, I will take that fight. So that's usually how it works. When Joe lands, Joe's going to be like, what the hell? Guys are calling me to fight Cormier? This can't be good. Dana. He referenced heavyweight. I mean, would you, the pool would could, theoretically could have hit. You know, include heavyweights. Would you? You know, do you think that that's a? Wise well, I think move? he said he doesn't want to fight a heavyweight because he's he been. I said two twenty. He'd fight up to two twenty, two twenty. Is that what he said? He said he can't fight a big guy because of he started his weight cup at two twenty, two twenty five. Right. All our heavyweights are big guys. So. Dana. Joe Silva just texted me. What the fuck happened? <laughs> Lorenzo, it's a group message between him and me. And Lorenzo said, welcome to Las Vegas. Dana, between... <laughs> what uh, the fuck? Dana, between losing the Diaz-McGregor fight and then now this on this card, how much of the financial burden has all this been on the company through, like, promotional material and all that kind of stuff? Yeah, you know, that's part of the game. You know, that happens. Uh, yeah, our, our team will literally be working all night now to flip all the spots that are out there, pull them back and put Brock as the main card. It, 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 definitely, uh, it definitely sucks and it's a problem, but this is what we do, you know? And is Tate Nunes now the co-man? Oh, yeah. The, Joe's getting texts already with guys who want to fight Musasi. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to get to work. Okay. I, I might fight Musasi. want to fight uh, D.C. Musashi wants to fight DC. Cool. That's what you're saying? No, I don't know why I said Musashi, uh, <laughs> but I meant DC. Yeah. Thank you, guys. Appreciate it. Have a good night. Thank you.